that the aggregation of the percentages of the results scored by the four presidential candidates who were on the ballot as declared by Mr. Chebukati presented to us a, mathemat a mathematical absurdity that defied logic. Take notice that Mr. Chebukati's aggregation was as follows. Raila Odinga, 48.85%. William Ruto, 50.49%. Waiga Maure, 0.27%. Wajakoya George, 0.44%. This summation gives us a total of 100.01%. The 0.01% translates to approximately 142,000 votes, which will make a significant difference if in the final result. We therefore decline to take ownership of the said results because the aggregation resulted in a total exceeding the percentage of 100, which cast doubt on the accuracy of the source of the figures tallied. And when we demanded that we verify our record, the chairman declined, overruled us, and insisted on declaring and announcing the said result. That, number two, contrary to the constitution and legislation, the results declared and announced did not indicate the total number of registered voters, the total number of votes cast, or the number of rejected votes, if any. In this regard, the results announced by Mr. Chabukati lacked a critical ingredient, naming, namely the total number of valid votes cast to support the percentages scored by the four candidates. Unless demonstrated otherwise, we all know that the percentage is essentially a fraction of a whole number. Hence, if for example, the 7.17 million valid votes cast in favor of the winning candidate, as declared and announced by Mr. Chabukatri, translates to 50.49%, then it was 50.49 of what? Further, take notice that Mr. Chabukati claimed that Raila Odinga attained 25% of votes in 34 counties, while William Ruto attained 25% in, in 39 counties. The question is, which figures in the 34 and 39 counties re respectively constituted the independent variable to warrant the conclusion of 25% in 34 counties and 25% in the 39 counties for Raila and Ruto respectively. In the absence of a credible and verifiable explanation, we, conclude, we concluded that the process that went into generation of Form 34C, which he used to declare results of the presidential election was opaque and incapable of earning our ownership and confidence. Number three, guided by the authority of my Nakiai case, petition number 106 of 2016, as upheld by the Court of Appeal in Civil Appeal number 105 of 2017, and affirmed by the Supreme Court of Kenya, we state 
categorically that the results of the presidential election held in August 9, 2022, declared and announced by Mr. Wakula Chebukati on August 15, 2022, belonged to himself and do not represent the declaration and announcement by Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. The commission has to process the results before they are declared and announced by the chairperson. For the avoidance of doubt, let me quote the minor EI case. It says, we reiterate as we conclude that there is no doubt from the architect of the law, we have considered that the people of Kenya did not intend to vest or concentrate such sweeping and boundless powers in one individual, the chairperson of the appellant. The emphasis is that the commission's chairperson has conducted the election as though he is the national returning officer, a non-existent role, and his role in declaring results that were not approved by plenary by all seven commissioners renders the results unconstitutional to the extent that this is his own results as opposed to those of IEBC. In keeping to Article 138.2 of the Constitution, there is no national presidential election in Kenya, but rather the presidential election is held in each constituency. Point number four, that in contrary to the constitution and legislation, by the time the chairman declared and announced the final results, results from certain constituencies had not been announced. This is our statement. We promised you a comprehensive statement. So here we are and we are going to give it 